All right, everyone. It is me, Johnson Chan, and uh, a decent night's sleep. Actually, shade, as you can clearly see. And uh, I finally had a little bit of time to actually play a lot of the Battle Brothers game, and like you know, it's giving me some good inspiration and ideas for uh, my game uh, because when I come on my game, um, I definitely need some sort of PVE mode that can definitely balance out, uh, you know, the PVP aspect of my game, right? Because basically I'm creating what is essentially like the World of Warcraft or like mobile slash casual gaming, right? But still have enough like PVP elements in it so that, you know, you can always feel like, you know, it's like, yeah, I feel like, because I, because I know, because I'm a gamer myself. So there are times where I like, I feel I really want PVP. Right, and I get the joy out of that, and then it's like, okay, it's like the same thing over and over again. I want to try something else, and that's why I go back to PVE, and then you know, round and round it goes. The problem with, uh, I guess, World of Warcraft is, I guess, you, it just feels the same. Uh, the other problem is, it's also it's also a game that just requires a that you pay it constantly, right? Uh, you know, the subscription fee, and then also. You know, uh, you just have to constantly play to keep up. That's a very bad feeling to have. That's why my game has to be more like a casual type of thing. That there's no real competition or anything like that, right? I mean, yeah, we'll have leaderboards, but it doesn't really matter. Like, right? you know, what matters is what you decide to do, right? You know, so. And I also kind of want like a pretty long progression system, like they have in Albion, right? So, I mean, the only problem is it'll be very hard to satisfy the very hardcore gamers. But, I mean. Well, I mean, uh, they'll be able to use the auction house eventually, so, you know, they'll just, uh, I don't know, I'll just worry about it later. Because they're always going to just be a, there's always going to be like all that 1%, right? They'll probably be the streamers and stuff. They'll say, yeah, we have nothing better to do. I'm like, yeah, it'll look bad, but, you know, ultimately I cater to the casual, not not to the hardcore player. Even though I myself am both hardcore and casual. So uh, there, there, there's that. Um, then, then I actually was spending some time listening to Jesse Lee Peterson. I spent most of the little time that i had because i just made the video immediately after uh you know doing my morning routine the video games and crypto that um he was actually interviewing some dude from the cato institute which is basically a you know globalist uh you know no, another cucked anti-trump institution now at this point um <clears throat> you know they actually had a pretty friendly conversation he's like yeah i mean immigration's fine and Jesse Lee Peterson was countering, saying, no, immigration hurts uh, the black community. And then, you know, they had a nice, friendly uh, back and forth about it. And he's like, yeah, so next time uh, when you come to L.A., I'll show you uh, what's, you know, how, how the black community was getting ruined by uh, all these illegals, you know, uh, wiping out the blacks or something like that. And, and, and then the Cato guy countered by saying, uh Watch my call. I'll show you how uh, immigrants are not a problem, right? So it's kind of an interesting thing. Um, and of course, uh, Jesse also asked him about like the wall. He's like, "Oh, I'm opposed to the wall in America, but the wall in Israel is okay, right?" Jesse Lee Pearson actually asked him that. He, the Cato guy did say it's because uh, uh, Israel has actual terrorism problems, so that's why they need the wall, right? Whereas America doesn't. Right. And then just and then that's when they got in the whole, you know, blacks are being terrorized by the illegals thing. So that's how they, you know, went back and forth. So I don't know if people are just being uh, duplicitous, which is obviously my assumption, or people really are just ignorant. Uh, I'm still of the opinion that it's really just more uh, a combination of both ignorant and duplicity. Because even if you find out the truth, you know, right, if, you know, if money and fame and grifting is your God, right, and that's what immigration really is. Uh, well, you're not going to do what's right for America, right? It's just that simple, right? It's like, oh, well, I know, you know it's like I know it harms, you know, so and so community, but you know what? I'm making a lot of money. Who cares, right? Just, just, just let them all in, right? And, and that's what that's what happens, right? And then they also had an interesting discussion about po police brutality. You know, Jesse just thinks like the cops are pretty much justified all the time, right? Uh, and uh, what you call it? <clears throat> you know, they're scared for their lives. Well, the thing is, we, so are we, right? And, uh, you know, me personally, you know, at least the cops here in New York City, like, they're always huge fucking assholes. That's why I don't like them, right? A lot of people don't like them. I, I distinctly remember all the white cops always, like, tar like, they always give me a little bit of hostility, but then the same white person that just walks by at the exact same moment, they just have no problems with them. It's like, what the fuck, right? You know, one time I was staying in the subway. I might have told the story before. Right, 
uh, it was crowded, right? And, you know, I was at the end of the train, right? Because, you know, I just barely caught it, right? Eventually, on the next few stops, like, a cop just came in and just asked me to step aside, right? Because I because he wanted to get into the, you know, the back of the train conductor room or whatever. Like, okay. And so I just moved over because, like, it was crowded. And then he just screamed at me. He's like, over here, right? And he, like, really scared. I was like, oh, okay. And I just I immediately walked over. Uh, and then, you know, he walked, and then he went to the spot that I was standing in and they said okay and yeah, thank you and then he real I think he realized like hey I shouldn't have probably done that right uh, but like when he said sorry there was like this such a weird look I was like I originally I always interpreted it as like he didn't even want to say sorry like he, he looked very pained like he didn't want to say is like you know it was like yeah and it's like no he didn't say sorry it's like uh thank you yeah, that's what he said he said thank you I was like, uh, yeah, sure. And it's like, you know, and I looked around quickly around the whole train car. Everyone was glaring at the cop. So, um, you know, uh, Jesse did recently say everyone gets what they deserve. There's a reason why people don't like cops. It's not out of thin air, right? I mean, but I mean, Jesse's from the old timers, so you know, he's from a different boomer time, uh, and he's obviously, you know, pretty nice. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't expect him to really understand it. Right, but yeah, and then, and then uh, the younger people. I mean, obviously, it's a different, different situation. So that's what. Oh man, this thing's lagging so bad. I don't know why Bit Heroes has been lagging so bad. So there is that. Uh, one time, another angry-looking cop was just glaring at me because I was walking by with a bunch of cops. Right, they didn't have a problem with the white again. They didn't have a problem with the white guy walking by the exact same fucking pathway. But they, you know, they so they ignore him. But you know, I come by. It's like what the fuck, <laughs> you know? They didn't actually do anything. They didn't stop me though. But they just kept glaring at me. I just thought, you know, that's a pretty good way to distract cops if you're gonna ambush them. Just send a non-white minority. They draw in all the attention and glares of the cops, and then they get ambushed. <laughs> it's like because obviously a sniper could be like in a different direction. Like when I was gonna do my like police show um, uh, slash movie thing, right? With the script, I was gonna put that in because that's what happened to me, right? It's like, it, and then actually after the Dallas ambush, right? Then all of a sudden the cops like, like they still technically glare, but they're like a lot more like, hey, don't you know get fixated on it. So I I think they finally were taught like, hey, you shouldn't do that because that's actually a good way for you to get. To, uh, draw their attention and then get shot from like the other side <laughs> so you know like cops are getting ambushed uh, these days so you know it's like you know you gotta be careful right so yeah so that that, that, that there, there's a reason why right i mean if you're white i mean i guess depending on the area um i think you'll probably be okay but i definitely hear of situations where even white people don't like the cops either like they like they all hate each other now too so, yeah, it's like, you know, you, uh, like, I mean, it must be hard being a cop, right? Because on one hand, you know, you've seen enough crap that you're like, oh, man, I'm getting scared, which you really shouldn't because you're the one carrying a gun around. But then, like, 99% of the time, most people are actually pretty nice, but you, you treat them like shit anyway. Like, you know, even though, you know, being a cop doesn't give you justification to do that. And then, of course, people are going to hate you. So, uh, yeah. So, you know, that, that's my thing. And then I think, let's see, what's the thing I'm currently halfway through? You can overcome, but first you must realize you're wrong. Uh, I don't know. He, so he's talking to this guy. Matt is. Uh, who likes to smoke pot. Uh, and then, I don't know, they, they're also getting kind of into like the sex before marriage thing. But he's focusing more on the weed part. You know, I'm only up to like 12 minutes and a half or so. So then I got to start doing my video. So, anyway, speaking of which, uh, so yeah, it looks like crypto is kind of recovered, so not bad for a Sunday, right? And 24-hour volume is still pretty slow, so that means rich people are still taking time off. So, very, very good sign. Bitcoin Dallas is at 62.7%. 24-hour volume is 139.7 billion. Uh, Bitcoin's recovered 2% to 98.28, uh, or 9829, so very nice. Litecoin's up a nice chunk, 78 to 78 down to 37 cents, 3.6 percent or so. Oh, look at that! It's just going straight up, like a nice 45 degree angle. Yeah, if you look at the price patterns across the board, it's flatlining or flatlining towards going up, or yeah, it's like or a couple are going straight up too. Yeah, I don't know status coin what. Uh, yeah, flavor of the month coins. 
Um, oh, also, Mitch said uh, he recently created something called a Docker container for the JMC coin wallet. So, uh, with a programming friend of his. Uh, and now he's also able to resolve some of his more personal issues. So he'll be able to continue working on the code. Uh, cause that was actually, cause I had to hold down the fort, uh, essentially, uh, while he did take, took care of some personal stuff. And, uh, it's actually nice because basically what that means is a server can now run the, uh, cryptocurrency wallet, JMC wallet, uh, uh, regardless of operating system. So we're hoping that, that this will help with the exchanges specifically with Crex, uh, cause JMC and 404 are the same code base and so is two by two coin. So, so all you have to do is just copy and paste the, the code, essentially. And then uh, hopefully that will make the 404 coin uh, wallet on Crex especially a lot more stable because they o it always goes down, right? It, like, not always, but once every, like, couple of weeks. So hopefully this new uh, Docker container thing will uh, help them out. So we'll see because, uh, yeah, because again, Crex insists on using the Bitcoin version of the 404 coin wall and not the Linux version, which is obviously much more stable and much more, uh, ser it's specifically designed for servers by its nature. So uh, we'll see if that if that can help them uh, a bit. Uh, and Mitch said, yeah, like it's like very likely. So, all right, you know, he's the expert on that. You know, well, I'm the expert on video gaming and programming games, or as I'm going to become one. Well, that's the other thing, too. I spent a lot of time yesterday coding. <clears throat> so, because uh, I kind of just want to get it over with, right? But also, we're starting to repeat some of the same stuff that I already kind of know-ish, or I'm somewhat familiar with. So, you know, it's going along pretty nicely. And then the next lesson, the next big lesson, is going to be uh, uh, a turn-based strategy game. Because I definitely want some kind of turn-based thing for the PvE mode in my game. I definitely will not make it PvP because I don't want I don't want it to be just one versus one. And then, you know, I mean, I guess it would be okay on the server. So, I don't know. I'll have to think about it. I'll really have to think of how I want to do it, right? Do I want real time? Which could be a problem because you need people to queue with. Or would I make it more like Bit, Bit Heroes where it'll just scale everybody. And then you just do it whenever you want, which I think is probably the vastly superior casual casual option. So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll have to do that. And in Bit Heroes, you have familiars, which is like pets that do stuff with you, right? They, they basically act as like specialized avatars that help your character. In my game, it'll basically be other characters, maybe beasts or whatever. And, of course, ships and vehicles and tanks or whatever. So it'll be the same thing. Dog coin, um, 327.6 million uh, market cap, up 2.16%. So not too bad. And um, aye, aye, aye. Steam, Steam is at 21.90 cents. So not, uh, so it's doing all right. So cryptocurrency is recovering. Uh, I still don't think we're out of the woods yet, but again, very good sign. Um, it definitely doesn't look like it's gonna go down. All right, but I mean, we'll we'll definitely have to see this coming week. But you know, hey, I'll definitely take whatever we have today. So, uh, of course, nothing here. I think I'll eventually stop tracking this too. Uh, GMC coin is back to three to four sub satoshis. It looks like it was as high as five. Yeah, yesterday GMC went on a rampage. It was like just a lot of buying. So actually, you know, what? I'm going to refresh this again. Is this uh, the current? Because because uh, Brave likes to cache a lot of these things. It doesn't actually give me the right up to date data sometimes. Yeah, that's correct. Yep, three to four. So a decent amount. Four to four coins back down to four to five sub satoshi. So it's so yesterday went as high as like six. I don't remember if it went up to six during the video yesterday, but it definitely went up as high as six. Now it's back to four to five. So at least 404 is kind of recovering, right? I still don't know why people are shitting on 404, but you know, that's just how it goes. And of course you have two by two coins. So you have uh, 55 to 56. So uh, it's doing all right. Uh, you know, so far, uh, so stable. Compound coin, surprisingly, is getting stronger, uh, a little bit stronger at least. It's at 4263 or 4300 Satoshis of a dog coin, up to 4950. Uh, Still has a decent amount of buys, actually. Oh, wow, people are actually buying in large quantities. Wow, I'm actually kind of shocked about that. All right, well, I guess I can try to put my thing somewhere in between these two prices, then. 
All right, so today's Sunday, so there hasn't been a whole lot of news. Um, although I guess we'll take a look at the Simpsons. The problem is the Simpsons are, you know, very anti-Trump and like very cringe and cupped. So uh, yeah. Uh, well, we'll take a look. Irish do 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 do. Rare price. This is when to buy Bitcoin. Drug dealer loses sixty when Lila only tosses the codes. Oh wow! So a landlord just threw away sixty million dollars. That's that's hilarious. The thing is, I mean, if I really want to like farm the pages, we'd read it. Oh, I guess so. Fine. Yeah, we'll take a look. Uh, let's see, because you know, I really don't want the title to be about the Simpsons anyway. They're like anti-American, anti-Trump, and pro uh, uh, pro destruction of America, and probably all the other degeneracy afflicting us. The uh, Western society, so I don't want to support them if I don't have to. Uh, blah, 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 uh, another blah, uh, blah. Um, this was yesterday, but I mean, Trump is already going to win re election, so uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And COVID. Oh, yeah, COVID. Well, big lies, we're going to gain control of COVID 19. No. If we get rid of the coronavirus, Bitcoin can finally... Because the problem is everybody in China and Asia are not trading, right? Everyone's like uh, in lockdown, essentially. So, yeah, we need to free up all that money. <laughs> you know, it, like it's like... Think about what happened... Remember when JMC coin not too long ago was like under maintenance and corrects for like two weeks? That's exactly what's happened in Asia, right? We want the money to flow so JMC coin can, you know, do its normal thing. So, uh, so yeah, it will not lose momentum, all right? If anything, everybody's going to start making money. Now, if it does, it'll be because everyone dumps crypto and buys stocks, all right? But, I mean, eventually, you know, the problem is crypto has already been hit by the coronavirus, too. So, it's not likely going to happen because people have already... People who are afraid of coronavirus have already dumped, essentially. So, when the coronavirus is gone, then they'll go back to it. That's just how it works right you know it's like i want to buy like for example right i'm gonna go to kfc right i want to buy chicken there there here's the problem right there was a shooting right outside i'm just making up the example and it actually happened well guess what i still want to eat kfc but i had to i'm not going to go there right so therefore i'm not going to be spending money there and they don't make any money once the situation clears and the shooting and all that investigation stuff is gone then i can go to the kfc because i know i'm not going to get shot it's the same with the coronavirus or really just about anything else. Once the threat is gone, then we come back, right? You know, so that's just how it goes. Uh, gold, blah, 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 mine, Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, so we got the, the Simpsons stuff. Oh, yeah, I already looked at this. Okay. All right. Simpsons gave Bitcoin and crypto massive exposure. Uh, Professor Frank introducing crypto to Lisa Simpson on TV's. Uh, how digital tokens work. Um, okay. Uh, let's just check for, let's see. I will explain cryptocurrency. Oh, yeah. Shit. I actually want to watch this. The problem is copyrighted material, right? When Owen Benjamin was going crazy with net, uh, you know, they, they actually, they actually banned him off of YouTube for copyright infringement, probably because of all that Seinfeld and, uh, South Park cartoons that he kept, uh, using. So I'm not going to use it here. But I mean, you can, you can watch it if you want to. Jim Parton explains cryptocurrency. Yes. Uh, wow. Simpsons only draw 4 million viewers now. That's a pretty far... Yeah, but I mean, that still makes Fox a lot of money. So, yeah. Well, I mean... Well, I guess good for them, bad for us. But hey, you know what? We got cryptocurrency out of it, so I'm all right with it. Right? We'll 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 pillage the Simpsons for what it's worth, but we'll try not to uh, give them anything. Unfortunately, I can't do the same thing with like big tech. You know, Twitter, Microsoft, uh, Silicon Valley, Amazon. Right? So, yeah. Drug dealer loses sixty million Bitcoin when the landlord threw away his codes. Hmm. An Irish drug dealer learned the hard way that what every Bitcoin investor knows, never lose your codes. Clifton Collins, a former security guard and beekeeper turned weed grower dealer, lost $60 million when his landlord cleaned out the house he'd been renting and sent everything to the dump. He cleaned a fishing rod case that hid the Bitcoin codes. Without the codes, accounts cannot be accessed. Yeah, if you're a drug dealer, I mean, 
you're going to have to see that's a hard part. You won't have access to the banks, right? So you just can't buy a safety deposit box. Oh, actually, you don't have to just write it down and just email it to yourself. <laughs> like there's a lot of ways you can back up your fucking uh, cryptocurrency uh, codes. Um, God, and having this stupid pop up thing here. Well, the Irish Times Collins bought most of the Bitcoin in 20 late to late 2011 and early 2012 using cash he made growing weed. In early 2017, he had just over 6K Bitcoin in one account, but he feared it may be too easy for a hacker to access. He decided to spread his wealth across 12 accounts, then printed out the codes on a piece of paper. All right, that's good. He hid the paper inside a little bit of cap of his K, uh, da, 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 uh, which he kept as rent and home in Far Not Craro. What? I'm not even going to pronounce wherever that is. Is this even in America? Oh, right. It says it's in, it's in Ireland. Right. Irish. I was like, yeah. Well, I kept thinking this was somewhere in America for some reason. It all went south for college when he was arrested in 2017 for weed possession and sentenced to five years in prison. His house was broken into and shortly thereafter. His landlord sent his belonging to clean the city flight of to the dump. Uh. Uh, <laughs> so it was sent to Germany or tried to be incinerated. The criminal has to be arrested, cops to 12 accounts, but cannot access the view without the codes the Irish Times reported. Cause of sits come in terms of the loss of considered punishment for his own stupidity. Yes. Uh, see, what's funny about this is, see, what's ironic is I just saw the uh, Jesse Lee Peterson interview with the Alex Nor Nazwa or Cato Libertarian guy, and, like they want to legalize weed. Believe it or not, this would actually be a very good case for legalizing weed because now basically the government wasted a lot of time and money enforcing this shit. And then they also just destroyed $60 million or what, how, how much was this worth? Uh, $60 million worth of Bitcoin. All right, this guy clearly is an entrepreneur. He just did it the wrong way and he could have easily have just bought real estate and stuff and started, you know, an empire. Instead, we're just put, we're putting uh, rich people that could, you know, save Ireland, you know, or the world rather, uh, in jail, all right? And of course, it's the wrong kind of rich people. Uh, so, yeah. But you know, uh, you know. With that being said, yes, he was stupid. A, he was paranoid hacker fears, right? That's why you have to have multiple redundancies. I talk about this a lot. You have to have multiple redundancies, right? Because a lot of shit does happen. I think it's called Murphy's law. Right, what does, what you don't think happens will happen, right? You know, so you have to assume. Why have I lost everything? What is my backup plan, right? You know, do I have a copy of this here? Do I have it buried in my backyard? Do I have it in a safety deposit box? Did I email myself some clue, right? Something, right? Blah 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 blah, right? There's no reason why you should be. This should happen to you, right? You like, you know, you should be able to have you know, a way to always access your crypto in case you lose everything else. Um, and on top of that, if this guy was a drug dealer, all he had to do was just get a proton mail and not tell anyone about it, right? You know, or other encrypted services. It's not, it's not hard, all right? But, you know, um, what you call, he's come to terms of loss and, you know, as we now know, everything's meaningless in life anyway, right, without God. And so, you know, it's just a worldly material thing. Granted, it's $60 million. It is a pretty <laughs> hefty chunk of change. That's more money than I have, obviously, for now. Uh, but, you know, you know, if he's a... Well, actually, wait, he's in jail now, right? Ah, so he's going to miss out on the boat, too. See, what I don't understand is, he, why didn't he just simply stop? I mean, he could have just made a lot of... You know, uh, what are you going to do, right? I mean, he even had a job, too. So he could have just said, I was just buying crypto through my security my, uh, security guard job. Right? You know? And then he'll have to fudge the numbers a little bit, and Ireland will be like, hey, this sounds a little suspicious, but eh, all right. But, no, well, that's just how it goes. Um, I really, I really want this stupid thing to go away. All right. All right. I think I got it. I think I got it. All right, good. Because I was about to archive that photo this fucking site. Uh, coronavirus, I am curious. Don't buy China's story, the coronavirus may have leaked from a lab. Oh, okay, so even the New York Post is now saying, uh, it's, uh, the, yeah, so now, I, see, the thing is, China is not in with the global, uh, the globalist, uh, I almost said, I said, I almost said what I really wanted to say, the globalist establishment agenda, so that's why it's okay to criticize China. But notice if you cannot criticize other minority groups or other countries. Because then you'll lose your job, you'll get deplatformed off of YouTube and Twitter and Facebook. 
You know, it's it's such bullshit. Because I think the establishment has finally realized that us Chinese people are like basically like the whites, except we don't have guilt or shame. Uh, and then now, and then on top of that, China also has an average higher IQ than whites, uh, but only slightly, I think. Actually, I don't know. The problem is I don't have access to it anymore because uh, Google uh, censored all the race IQ uh, studies. So I think like whites on average have like 105 IQ while Asians is like 115. That may not sound like much, like 10 points, but apparently each IQ point is actually worth a ton. So basically it's like an exponential increase or some shit. Yeah. So basically China is actually a really huge threat to the establishment. Um, and it's only because China is not is is not bowing down for now to uh, you know to the bullshit degeneracy uh, agenda that's currently plaguing us. So, uh, but that's fine. You know, uh, the good will win out in the end. And now that I'm finally coming into my own, I can finally do something about it too. Right? The problem is we still have to deal with the uh, fake right people. You know, actually, I got the email yesterday for Mike Surridge's Night for Freedom thing. And I wound up tossing it, uh, not, not because I have a problem with Mike, uh, but I have a problem, A, with the speakers, because obviously they're all going to be fake right assholes, so why would I give them money? And number two, like, it's like there's kind of no point anymore. It's like, oh, well, if I want to meet other people, it's like, I don't know, that didn't really seem to work out too well, right? And also, it wasn't really great for dating either, so it's like, and it's like, yeah, forget it. So, yeah. Uh, but you know, I have my own thing, so eventually I'll have my own events. But it'll be more video game oriented, though. So, uh, I mean, we'll have to see. Um, we'll have we'll have to see what the reaction is when I start putting into the story, like you know, like, uh, you know, like say abortion's now banned, right? In my in my in my universe, because obviously the liberals aren't around, and we're in rebellion clearly against the empire. <laughs> uh, and actually, the empire does not like that we did that, right? So, uh, what else? Uh, I might consider writing in that, yeah, uh, everything is going to have to be Christian. And that makes it a, like a huge threat or something. And then, you know, so basically kind of mirror the real uh, the real world. So but uh, it's going to be kind of hard for me to try to figure out how to keep it muted. Right. So I think I have the idea. Like, I think what will be is because uh, there because like if you ever watch Battlestar Galactica, I kind of want like a not a rough copy of it, but like, I like some of the ideas in it right? in Battlestar Galactica in season one and in the final season mutiny was a big was a big issue because they, 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 they had fundamental disagreements about how to do things I want the conservatives in my universe to basically have the same thing to make it interesting like well you bad gay marriage and we should all have abort well no everyone's opposed to abortion conservative side so we'll probably focus more on like the gay marriage thing and and then that won't be the only wedge issue and then people take up arms <laughs> or against each other and then like i and then i now have to deal with it i don't give too much more of the story away though but that does actually have a direct negative impact on my character uh you know story-wise because um yeah i'll leave it at that i don't i don't actually give it away so uh you'll, you'll just have to you'll just have to play the game right or i guess just wait for the um wait for the cutscenes. <laughs> So anyway, uh, if you like what you saw, read or heard, hit the like button, the follow button, or subscribe button from wherever you're watching this from, or my YouTube's at youtube.com forward slash JMC Radio. Man, that is such a good, uh, such a good URL and brand, right? So, because I have to actually change the name of this channel to match the URL. That's how Google does it. It's like so annoying. It's so annoying. I want like a different url with a different title but google doesn't allow for that it's just it's just irritating so it sounds a little weird but you know what, what are you gonna do um uh what you might call it so uh yeah smash that subscribe button on the right hand side of this page and then uh yeah because you know good things will happen um uh, so it looks like uh the views are starting to start to reflect the real numbers uh, all right, works for me. So anyway, obviously I'm done for the day. Uh, I kind of want to get Burger King today, but I don't want to spend 16, 17 bucks. You know, plus I always just remove the buns because uh, I buy four Whoppers. But if I remove all the buns, that means the protein and meat and stuff. It's actually reduced to like around 700 calories, and then I get like fries. 
So I actually wind up having like a 12, 1300 calorie meal, but it's like 16, 17 bucks for that. But I mean, it's Burger King, so I mean, <laughs> I don't know, I'll think of something. I know I can't have the Chinese food uh, anymore, though, because that place just ripped me off. Uh, so it's like, okay, that, that that's it for them. You know, plus I kind of want to, you know, take a walk, too. You know, today's my physical day off, so, you know, getting some air would do me some good. Because um, I'm so efficient with my food these days, you know, there's no reason for me to go out much. Uh, so yeah, uh, January three day or night, I will see you all in tomorrow's video, and, uh, let's just hope that, uh, crypto keeps going up, right? You know, if you get worried, well, you know, pass on your worries to God, right? Let him deal with your worries, all right? Don't, don't get too attached to this. I still find myself using this exact same lesson. I find that it works, it helps me cope so much more easily. It's like, yeah, it happens, right? The kind of thing. So especially with 404, because this is where I still get the majority of my mining income from, it's 404. But obviously it's gone down a complete shit. Uh, but two by two coins now, I'm taking up the slack because obviously it's the better, uh, it's the newer and better, well, it's not the better coins, but it's just newer. So the supply isn't out of control yet. And by the time it does, hopefully my game will be kind of, kind of somewhat playable, right? It should be playable, right? A year or two from now. And, you know, we'll see how good the microtransactions are. I mean, it's a free to play game. So it's very easy to actually get traffic and marketing done for a free to play game because it's free. You don't have to pay for it, right? But the people choose to play, uh, pay for it. So as long as my game is good, right? You know, everything will be, uh, everything will just be smooth sailing. Well, of course, the hard part is making the game, right? Because it's coding. All right, anyway, see you all tomorrow. Uh, I am going to go get something, or maybe I won't. Uh, we'll see. And uh, see you all tomorrow. Thanks. Judson Chad. JMC coin, 404 coin, and the fact that they're actually now starting to, ex like everyone's now saying there's a, a talk about the bio lab, because I said the same too. There is a bio lab in Wuhan, China, and, and now it's being exposed. So if the establishment thinks they can uh, play the, uh, you know, let's expose, you know, deep state type stuff, well, all right, you know, they're going to they're find that it's going to blow up in their face, you know, I'm not going to care. And on top of that, yeah, I mean, China does, you know, have to answer for lying and stuff, too. So it's actually pretty nice if you think about it. Everyone's being exposed, right? You know, but hopefully, you know, China won't go too crazy about it and then, you know, get us all killed, right? So, uh, but yeah, even China knows not to do something that stupid. So I think we'll, I think we'll be fine. Like, God is with us. God is with everybody who believes. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're just actually going to win. Well, except the censorship part. But that'll have to be dealt with later.